Good evening. I'm Rich White, and this is World News. Tonight, I will challenge a past guest, Professor E.T. Ismadad, and his ancient alien theory with hard facts. If you don't remember E.T. Ismadad, here's a recap of that show and his beliefs. If you look at the monument of Shalmanizar, you can see that it mimics the design of modern day rockets used for space travel. Now, how could that be possible unless they had a visual representation to copy? What gives this theory weight is that you find similar designs all over the world during ancient times. So in essence, that wasn't just the occasional visit by ancient aliens, but it shows that we were visited constantly. They were to us like the wealthy is to the homeless. They gave us the junk they didn't want anymore, and they were then worshipped like gods. If we need more proof, just look at the different scenes expressed on the stone. If we look at this register here, we can plainly see these otherworldly beasts with human heads following an elephant. This is indicative of the fact that they had superior technology to our own today because they were capable of successively transplanting human heads on animal bodies. I want to start off by saying that I think that everything E.T. Ismadad believes is preposterous and I plan to use facts to disprove all of his childish musings. First and foremost, his belief that the obelisk was designed to mimic an alien spacecraft couldn't be further from the truth. In history, and even in present day, obelisks owe their design to the phallus, or to be clear, the penis. The reason the phallus is used often throughout history is because it is considered a symbol of supremacy, dominance, and power. For those who are not familiar with phallic symbolism, here are a few examples that clearly are not inspired by aliens or their spacecraft. First, we have Cleopatra's phallus. We have the similar pre-Inca and Egyptian phallus. We have the Chinese small river phallus. We have the Luxor Egypt phallus. This right here is commonly mistaken for phallus. We have the ancient Peruvian drinking phallus. That's a mouthful. We have the odd Shiva Linga phallus. We have the French phallus and the much loved American phallus. The black obelisk that Dr. E.T. Ismadad misrepresented was set up at Nimrud by Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, about 860 to 825 BC. On the lower part of the four sides are 290 lines of cuneiform writing detailing the principal events of Shalmaneser's campaigns. And on the upper part are cut bas reliefs illustrating the historical narrative. The text relates that Shalmaneser conducted 31 expeditions against the peoples of various countries. His way extended to the shores of the Mediterranean on the west, to Cilicia on the northwest, to Babylonia and the Persian Gulf on the south and southeast, and to Media on the east. At certain places he set up memorial tablets sculptured with figures of his majesty and inscribed with his warlike deeds. In the black obelisk he records two wars against Haziel of Damascus in the 18th and 21st years of his reign, and it appears from another inscription that the payment of tribute by Jehu, son of Omri, was represented in one of these bas reliefs on this monument, it took place after the first of these campaigns of northern Syria, and that one of his allies was Ahab of Israel, who contributed a force of 10,000 men. What is so amazing about this ancient monument is that it both mentions and depicts a person from the Bible. In the accompanying picture is a detail from one of the panels on the obelisk. The person bowing down is none other than Jehu, king of Israel, and the person before whom Jehu is bowing is the Assyrian king Shalmaneser III. We are sure that this is indeed Jehu because of the inscription underneath the picture panel, which reads, Tribute of Jehu, son of Omri. Jehu was not Omri's physical son, but the word son here is used in the sense of successor. This is the only artifact 
from biblical times that contains a representation of a biblical character. This was my attempt at giving you a more informative look than Dr. Ismadad, I'm sorry, Professor Ismadad was capable of doing. And it is my quest to set out and show the ancient alien theories of the world that they don't know dick about their history. Thank you and good evening. Thank you.